Last time I saw Yun Pingu, the great Gumich clan leader, was at the Gama Festival last year in North East Island Land. Prime Minister Albanese had just delivered a passionate speech on constitutional recognition through a voice to parliament. And I recall the conversation that the Prime Minister just told us about between Yuna Pingu and the Prime Minister. He asked the Prime Minister if he was serious about constitutional recognition. And of course, the Prime Minister said we were. He, but he had every reason to be skeptical, every reason to not trust government. Over his 74 years, Yuna Pingu witnessed many broken promises. He fought all his life for his people, for land rights, and for the recognition of his people. I hope it gave him some comfort in his final days to know that we have made great progress on what, what he often described as the most serious business in this country, reconciliation. To finally recognise the 65,000 years of shared history and continuous connection to this land by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Yuna Pingu was an extraordinary leader, a man of fire, or Guthra, one of his sacred Gumich clan to totems, a pioneer of the Aboriginal land rights movement. At 15, in 1963, he helped draft the Yerik Kalabak petitions. Soon after, Yuna Pingu was the interpreter for Justice Edward Woodward in the Aboriginal Land Rights Commissioner appointed by Whitlam, for the Aboriginal Land Rights Commissioner appointed by Whitlam in 73, leading to the eventual recognition of Aboriginal land rights in the Northern Territory. Anda has both, both um, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition have said he was made Australian of the Year way back in 1978. In 88, he handed the Barunga Statement to then Prime Minister Hawke. This week, I took a minute to reflect in front of the Barunga Statement on display in this very parliament. The day it was unveiled by Prime Minister Hawke, it was his last day as Prime Minister in 1991. Prime Minister Hawke stated, it's present here calls on those who follow me that they find solutions to the abundant problems that still face Aboriginal people in this country. In 2023, the Barunga Statement, together with the Uluru Statement from the heart, guide us like a North Star to a better future. After Gama last year, Unipingo was appointed to the referendum working group, advising government on the way forward ahead of the referendum. This was our chance for recognition, recognition that has eluded us since 1788. At times, Unipingo, Unipingo was very unwell during these important meetings, but he remained engaged and informed of our progress. Above all, his leadership, wisdom and work over so many decades lit a fire within us all. In Aboriginal culture, Life is not linear, it's circular. And whilst you could see and hear Unipingu, you could also feel him. Next week, I'll be travelling with the Prime Minister to North East Artenland, where Unipingu was born, lived his, all his life and where he died. To say goodbye to a giant, a giant of our times, a giant for all time. His legacy to us as a nation was a life of truth-telling, of makarara, a coming together after a struggle of healing the divisions of the past, of passionate belief in his people and in the Australian people. And we as a nation can give to him a successful referendum on constitutional recognition later this year. As a mark of respect in the memory of Yunapingu, I ask all present to rise in their places. I thank the House. <laughs>